Hey, what's up? I'm Dustin, a developer here at Treehouse. Today, we'll go over a JavaScript array method known as map. Whether you've used this method before or haven't used it at all yet, I'll go over what it is and how we can work with it. I'll do all of this in my text editor, so feel free to follow along with me. And as always, check out the description or teacher's notes below for a related blog article and some helpful resources. Let's get into it. First, let's hop into the MDN docs and see what they have to say about this method. According to MDN, the map method creates a new array populated with the results of calling a provided function on every element in the calling array. Let's break that down and take a look at the example that they've provided. You can see that on line one, they've initialized a variable named array one, holding an array of numbers. Then on line four, they initialize a new variable named map one, and that's equal to array one dot map. And inside of this map method, we see x, an arrow function, and then x times two. If this looks a little confusing to you, let's check out the parameters by scrolling down to the parameters section. You'll see element, and this parameter is the current element being processed in the array. So to put it simply, this method will loop over a given array and do something with each item in that array. Some of you may be familiar with the for each method. While this may seem similar to the for each method at this point, there are some crucial differences that I'll demonstrate shortly. I'll go into even more detail about these differences in a separate video that I'll link either in the teacher's notes or description below. Now let's go back up to the example and see what's going on. It looks like they're creating this element parameter and setting it to x, and then taking x and multiplying it by two. So x holds the value of the current element in the array being processed. So the first time through the loop, x equals the first item in the given array, which in this case is one, and one times two equals two. Then the process starts over again, but at the next array's index. So the second time through the loop, x equals four, and four times two is eight, and so on and so on. On line six, we see a console.log logging the variable created on line four. This variable now holds a new array holding the results of the logic that was ran in the map method. So the new array holds all the numbers of the first array multiplied by two. If this still doesn't quite make sense to you yet, let's give this a try in our text editor. In my text editor, I'll just create an app.js file. And I'll be running this file with Node in my terminal, but if you're unfamiliar with how that works or don't have Node installed, you can still follow along by just creating an index.html file, link your app.js file inside of it, and then open the index.html file in your browser and navigate to your browser's console and write the same code as I am. So as always, let's run a quick console.log to see if everything's working. To do this with Node, I'll just open up my terminal and run node app.js. And sweet, we see hello world show up in the console. Let's remove that and set up an array. We'll make an array of pets, so I'll just name this array pets. Inside of our array, let's add a few strings. We can write dog, cat, and fish. Underneath our array, let's write pets.map. And inside of our map method, let's create a variable for our element parameter. I'll name this pet. Now, what do we want to do with each pet in the array? Let's make all of the letters of our pet uppercase by running the to uppercase method. If you're unfamiliar with the to uppercase method, I'll link some of the MDN documentation for it down below. But to put it simply, it just takes a given string and converts it to all uppercase letters. Great, so now we are using the to uppercase method on each array element. Let's put this into a variable and log it to the console. We can call this uppercase pets. Before we do this though, let's go over what we've done one last time. We created a variable named pets and we set it to an array and we added some strings. We added dog, cat, and fish. Then we created a new variable named uppercase pets and set it to the result of running the map method on our pets array. Inside of our map method, we are running the to uppercase method on each element. Great, so let's hit save and run our console.log to see what we have now.
Looks like our uppercase pets variable now holds an array of pets in all uppercase letters. Sweet. Remember, the definition of the map method states that map creates a new array populated with the results of calling a provided function on every element in the calling array. So what do you think happens if we log our initial pets array to the console? Let's find out. As you can see, nothing has changed with our initial pets array. Map does not change an array, but instead creates a new one. If you've used the for each method before, you'll probably think that map is pretty similar, if not identical. This is one of the differences between the two methods. If you'd like to know a little bit more about the differences between for each and map, and when is the best time to use either, I'll link a video down below where I go over the differences. I hope you found this guide on using the map array method helpful and you can comfortably start to implement this in your projects going forward. Remember to check out the teacher's notes or description below for an associated blog article and some helpful resources. I'll see you in the next one and until then, have fun and happy coding!